Hey guys, this is Mr. Oxy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. It is August the 10th, it's Wednesday, and I'm going to take a few minutes to uh, sort of talk you about a talk you through um, the, uh, the concept of diversification. I've made videos of this nature before uh, discussing this topic, but uh, what I want to do is uh, just spend a little bit more time here and maybe uh, share some information with you. In addition to that, a number of people have asked me, um, Hey, Mr. Oxy, what is in your portfolio nowadays uh, via email and comments and text messages and all kinds of things. So I thought I'll share some of that information with you too. So it's going to be a quick video. Uh, just to kick us off here, um, Motley Fool recently had an article, 80% of Warren Buffett's portfolio is invested in these seven stocks. And then he, the author continues, diversification isn't necessary if you know what you're doing. Uh, and then he proceeds to tell us that uh, Buffett is diversified into Apple, Coca-Cola, Chevron, Bank of America, Heinz Food, Kraft Heinz, um, American Express, etc. James B asked me on the uh, community channel, uh, "What are you? What are your current portfolio holdings?" I said, en "Energy or the entire portfolio?" And he said, "The entire portfolio." So I'll make a, a quick video showing you my equity holdings, and that is what I'm going to do now. So it's not going to keep you too long, but I want to show you what's in my portfolio. Before we do that, let's just take a quick look at uh, Uncle Warren's. A performance year to date for those stocks that I just mentioned. I specifically excluded Chevron and Occidental Petroleum because obviously we know that the energy stocks have done fairly well uh, in the general course of um, the uh, past trading year, even though it's pulled back sharply based on uh, a lot of misinformation and interference and uh, institutional trading over the, over the last uh, maybe six weeks or so. Uh, you should still be up and uh, pretty good in terms of your energy portfolio, if you are invested in energy stocks. How about Uncle Warren? So uh, he has a couple of winners here. These two winners are a financial stock, which is American Express, and the black one right at the top is uh, Apple. And uh, if we compare that to the uh, S&P 500, that's why I, see, I say he has two winners, but he also has three losers. And the three losers compared to the S&P 500 include Coca-Cola, uh, Kraft Heinz Food and uh, Bank of America. Bank of America seems to be one of the worst banks nowadays. Um, there are a couple of banks that are worth investing in in the United States uh, for sure. I think uh, JP Morgan is pretty cheap right now, cheap uh, to potentially open a position in. So what's in my portfolio? This is my uh, pie chart or wagon wheel of my entire portfolio. And I've highlighted a couple of the larger positions that I have in my portfolio. So going clockwise, uh, Alliance Bernstein is a financial services company. They sell research and investment management services. Enbridge is a diversified energy company out of Canada. Enbridge has pipelines. Uh, it's a fully integrated oil and gas company, and it's also the utility for Ontario, providing gas for heating and cooling for the province of Ontario, which is the most populous uh, province in Canada. Approximately you know, 10 million or so of the 30 million people in Canada live in the province of Ontario. The next large position I have just below Enbridge is energy transfer. I've spoken about energy transfer a lot. Um, so uh, I'm sure you're all familiar with that one. IEP is ICANN, ICANN Partners. So ICANN Equity Partners is a conglomerate. It's uh, basically a diversified holding. It's almost like holding an ETF. It pays a huge dividend, currently almost 15%. Occidental Petroleum, obviously all of you know. XLE is an energy ETF. I opened some positions in XLE, um, Fairly recently, I've uh, probably been building this position for the last two months or so. Uh, quite a nice chunk of my energy uh, portfolio is now in XLE. Um, XLE, by the way, its major holdings are um, Exxon and Chevron. Exxon and Chevron together make up almost 45% of XLE. PPL is Pembina Pipelines. Uh, in the United States, it trades under the ticker symbol PBA. So PPL in Canada, PBA in the United States, and TD Bank, TD Bank is actually uh, one of my largest positions. Uh, it's not that I put so much money into TD Bank per se, it's mainly a result of uh, compounded growth over many, many years, plus a very rich dividend of uh, currently around four, four and a half percent. Um, so if you compound that over many years, I've had TD in my uh, portfolio for a long time, and it's grown to one of my largest positions because as you know by now, I reinvest my dividends. So my financial stocks, as I just mentioned, TD is my largest position in finan financial stocks. 
Lions Bernstein is second largest. One of the reasons why I like Lions Bernstein is because it pays me a dividend of over 8%. Uh, another reason why I like Lions Bernstein is because it's very profitable and it has no debt. Bank of Nova Scotia or Scotia Bank is another Canadian bank. Uh, they have a huge footprint in Latin America. So in addition to being a Canadian bank, they are also dominant in uh, many South American countries. And Sun Life Financial is an insurer, so it's also a financial services company. Uh, but collectively, these four stocks make up my financial part of my portfolio. Energy. So here I'm a little bit more diversified and I have more uh, uh, positions overall than, for instance, finance, where I only have four stocks. So the large ones over here, obviously, uh, as I mentioned, is Occidental and Energy Transfer, Enbridge and Pembina Pipelines. Take a quick look at the others. Luke Oil, which is the um, Russian oil and gas integrated um, oil company, is about 1% of my portfolio. The reason why it's 1% of my portfolio is because Luke Oil is currently stuck. You cannot trade Luke Oil because of sanctions and the uh, stock price is 695. If they lift those, uh, or 696, if they lift those sanctions, I would try, try to buy some Luke Oil right away just to average out my cost basis. Palaf is uh, Paladin, which is a uranium mine. It's an Australian company, but the mining uh, operations are in, uh, in Namibia, in uh, Southern Africa. PBR is Petrobras. It now, uh, this position has now grown to almost 10% of my portfolio from nothing a few months ago. Petrobras has been my top performing stock over the last uh, two months or so. And in addition to that, uh, it pays a massive dividend. It's currently about 20%. XLE, I talked about a minute ago, is now occupying almost 13% of my total portfolio. Cameco is a uranium miner out of Canada. Most of their mining operations are in Saskatchewan. And collectively, these represent my energy stocks. So a couple of outliers here, which are a little bit freakish or different. One of them is an ETF, XLE. As I mentioned, almost half of XLE is Exxon and Chevron. So it's relatively safe. Plus it pays a dividend of around 4% or more. And then the other two outliers here that are similar are Palaf, which is Paladin, and uh, Cameco, which are the two uranium miners. And the other odd one out here, which uh, <laughs> the guys don't, uh, uh, you know, like don't, don't shoot me down in flames here because I hold a Russian oil company. I actually owned Luke Oil before uh, Russian san sanctions were imposed. So uh, it's a small sl slither of my energy portfolio, but uh, it's still quite a chunk of money. Other... So what else do I have in my portfolio? The largest position I have, in fact, one of the largest positions I have in total in my portfolio is ICANN Energy Partners. I mentioned that at the start. In terms of other, this is almost 40%. The other big one is VYM. VYM is an ETF that just pretty much covers the entire market. So it's a broad uh, ETF that invests in um, many uh, of the large high cap stocks. So Dow stocks, S&P 500, big ones, and it pays a... Uh, Nice dividend too. Uh, BCE is a telecommunications and, and electronics and technology company out of Canada, Bell Communications, 21%. I hold this one primarily for the dividends, about 6.5%. And then Home Depot. The reason why I have this little slice of Home Depot here sitting in the other section of my portfolio is because very recently Home Depot, which for the people who don't know, maybe international viewers, Home Depot is uh, kind of the place where we go to buy tools and paint and stuff like that. Um, the stock was trading at about $400. It pulled back into the uh, sort of mid to high 200s. And I thought it was just too, uh, too cheap to pass up on. And in addition to that, if you're going into a recession, uh, owning a company that uh, supplies home builder type goods, uh, repair products and things like that, it's not a bad bet. You know, um, I'm not saying you should buy Home Depot, but it's kind of like a little bit of a foundational stock. I can just hold it and uh, I don't expect it to do too much. I also don't expect it to pull back much further from where it is right now. There's a small dividend around 2%, so that's not why I bought it. Uh, like the philosophical comment there is, um, uh, you know, you, you, can, you can cut back on your uh, fuel or gas consumption, you know, your, your petrol, for instance, uh, your heating and cooling to a degree, right? You can uh, run your uh, power appliances less. You can uh, reset your thermostat for your air conditioner or your heater, maybe, you know, making it, one degree cooler or one degree warmer, depending on uh, whatever whatever might be applicable. You might not take a, a joyride in your car very often because you're trying to save money for gas. You might uh, adjust your grocery bill uh, to buy food that's less expensive as um, we are more and more 
tight in terms of disposable income. But at the end of the day, if you own a home, or even if you rent a home because somebody owns their home, uh, you know, if a faucet uh, starts leaking or a toilet is running or, uh, you know, a pipe bursts or uh, a light falls from the ceiling or whatever the case might be, uh, you need to get it fixed. So you don't really have a choice. So Home Depot is less of a discretionary uh, retail investment than, let's say, Walmart or Target or Asda or one of those, right? Uh, just a, a last one here, just uh, before I wrap it up. Uh, two of the largest components or sectors in my personal portfolio are financials and energy. Financials have been uh, on decline sort of for uh, most of the year. It's had a little uptick recently. A year to date, the uh, financial sector is still very comfortably outperformed the S&P 500. So uh, if that's a benchmark that you want to use, you can see it hasn't been too bad. Over on the right-hand side here, you can see over a one-year period, the financials have collectively generated about 9% in ROI. Now, you may say that's not very much, but many of these financial stocks also pay a dividend of around 4% or so. So in theory, depending on what you're invested in, you might be up 13, 14, 15%. And remember, as I said before, I'm trying to make 15% per year because I'm not greedy. I just want to double my investment portfolio's value every five years or so. Energy year to date, of course, has been a top performer. Uh, that's why the bulk of my portfolio is effectively in energy and, of course, financials. And if you look at energy over the last one year period, it's up 50%. Now, um, if you had uh, stuck with me on Occidental Petroleum over the last two years or so, you might be up, uh, you know, three, 400%. So that's very, very different in terms of uh, the 50% of the index overall. Why 15%? Well, I explained it in my previous video. If you watched that one, uh, great. If you didn't, doesn't matter. Just very briefly, mathematically, if you can, uh, if you can grow your portfolio back by 15% per year compounded, then the value of your portfolio will double every five years. So that's kind of my, um, my investment philosophy and my target. Uh, from time to time, I will um, uh, you know, move out of one particular sector and move into another. Right now, I think in terms of where I'm at in, uh, with financials and energy making up the bulk of my portfolio, I'm okay, especially because I have that uh, very rewarding return generated by the energy sector over the last two years or so since uh, energy futures traded negative briefly in uh, what was it, April of 2020. Since then, it's just been skyrocketing, right? So if you had energy in your portfolio, you did good. And um, I counterbalance that with, uh, with my financials. And then in the other portion of my portfolio, so the other stocks that I mentioned, the largest position, in fact, one of my largest positions overall is ICANN. And even though ICANN has pretty much gone nowhere, it's kind of just flatlined, it pays a dividend of nearly 15%. So uh, literally for the uh, you know thousands of shares that I have in ICANN, uh, every, every quarter I, I receive a $2 dividend per share or $8 per year from uh, ICANN. So can't complain about that one either. Anyway, that's what's in my portfolio. Uh, yeah, if you want to comment, let me know what you think in, uh, in the comment section and I'll take a look at it and see what, uh, what you guys say. If you have any recommendations or any changes that you would think, uh, might be applicable to my portfolio, tell me too. I'll listen. Thank you. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.